Welcome back to episode number three with Mr. Hayden's Ag Lessons. I am your host, Mr. Hayden. Today we are talking about animal biosecurity. So I hope all of you are being safe out there, spending time with your loved ones. We're in day three of this uh, quarantine from coronavirus. I know a lot of you think, hey, Miss Trayton, you seem like a smart guy. You should know everything out there, but that is false, okay? Today, I am going to call in one of the most experts of experts when it comes in the animal world. Also, someone I know somewhat well, my wife, Dr. Kara Hayden. Hi, happy to be here. So, Dr. Hayden, I've heard a lot about biosecurity, but why do some people choose to go to BioLife instead? Oh, I, you know, I can't help you with the bio life thing, but I can help you with the biosecurity thing. So biosecurity is really important. Biosecurity is just a really fancy way of saying how we keep diseases out of our animals. So there's all sorts of diseases. There's zoonotic pathogens. There's ubiquitous pathogens. There's commensal organisms. There's those are diarrhea. some really big words, Dr. Hayden. I know those words without a doubt, but our audience members, you might have to explain that to them a little bit. So help us out. What do those words mean? So zoonotic pathogens, so that's a pathogen that can pass between people and animals. Yeah. Um, so that's one that can go back and forth. Ubiquitous, that's just a pathogen that's everywhere. So it doesn't really matter. Whatever the pathogen is, biosecurity is how we keep it out of our farms. And the word pathogen, is that just the path you take in life or what is pathogen? That, that's a close guess. <laughs> Pathogens, bacteria, viruses, parasites, anything that can cause disease right. in an animal. Now you talked about parasites, but I'm the host of the show, so we gotta live with those parasites in our body, right? What's a really common parasite that might impact a dog or cat? Oh, like a dog or cat, I mean, they can have like roundworms or um, whipworms, there's all sorts of different Like parasites. heartworms, like heartworms, heartworms, yeah. That could be a potential. Okay, right. yeah. that's important. So tell us in your career as a swine veterinarian, how do you keep your pigs safe that you see on a daily basis? Right, so biosecurity for me kind of comes down to four things. So we're trying to protect our domestic hogs from four things. So That is our sump pump uh, sponsor of the day there. Today we have Polina Hardware located in Northwest Iowa. Good friends of the show, Eric and Heidi Brown, doing what they need to do to keep you safe and ready for home tasks. Sorry about that, go ahead. No, that's fine. So there's four things. So we're trying to protect our domestic pigs from wildlife, so rodents, birds, um, you know, wild hogs that could potentially be around. So that's area number one. Area number two is from other domestic hogs. Um, number three would be people. And then number four would be fomites. Fomites, that's a weird word. What does that mean? So a fomite can literally be anything. So a fomite, really the definition is something that can carry a pathogen from one location to another. Okay. So this booty could be a fomite if I got it sick. <laughs> And then I pass it off to you, and then okay. you got sick. So. That, that makes sense. No wonder my kids always get sick at daycare. So that's important to know. So yeah, toys are fomites. <laughs> toys are fomites. Good to know. So tell us some other things that you have to take as precautions for biosecurity when you're visiting your hog barns. Yeah, so when I'm looking at those four things, the so number one, rodent bird control, right? So I'm looking at the facilities, making sure that they've got rodent baiting that's appropriate, making sure that they've got fencing if they're outdoor hogs to keep those uh, domestic hogs away from feral hogs and then I'm also looking at bird netting and everything to make sure birds aren't getting in. So that's fairly straightforward. Number two is keeping them away from commercial animals. So anytime you introduce a new animal into the herd, uh, it really is good to have a two week quarantine, quarantine period. So basically the animals come in, you test them, make sure they're free from disease, you wait two weeks and then you test them again. So that's just in case there's a long incubation period for a disease. And how do you make sure you're not a fomite yourself when you travel to multiple barns throughout yeah. the day? Yeah, so that's great. So uh, people and fomites, that's the kind of the last two areas that I'm concerned about. So I go from farm to farm all day long, right? My job is to look at sick animals. So I go to a lot of sick animals every day. So there's all sorts of stuff that I do to try to protect my clients from something that I could potentially carry around and could potentially be a fomite. So uh, I have booties. So I pop these booties on every time I get out of my car. So before my feet touch the ground, I've got a booty on uh, and I wear these booties all the way into the facilities. Uh, I have Clorox wipes with me all the time. I actually have wipes that have Synergize, which is a great disinfectant against common pathogens that affect pigs. Uh, I wear gloves and I am really good about sanitizing my hands, my steering wheel, everything between clients. Uh, and then I wear these plastic boots. So there's always a clean, dirty line at every site. So. Uh, the one side is the dirty side, which is where you could potentially have disease, and then you pop these boots on as you cross into the clean side. So then the, the last piece of equipment, 
uh, that you're so kindly modeling for us. Wait, here. I thought I was a beekeeper. <laughs> nope, this is a really common thing to see in the swine oh. industry. So this is a suit that we wear to protect our animals in case there's something uh, that we've been carrying on our clothing. Um, so it can be this or it can be cloth coveralls, but um, these are really common to see around pig buildings. So if you see someone wearing this coming in and out of a pig building, it does not mean that those pigs are sick or that there's some major problem there. They're just trying to keep the pigs from getting sick. So it looks a little bit scary, but don't let that scare you. But I shower every day. How could there be diseases on me? Well, you can pick diseases up all over the place. So uh, unfortunately, people, like we talked about, people can become fomites. Casey's can be a fomite from people dragging diseases in there on their boots, on their shoes. If people aren't clean, stuff can be everywhere. So uh, we have to be really, really careful uh, and never assume that because you've taken a shower or you're wearing clean clothes that you're clean enough to just go into a barn. Does this look slumming on me? <laughs> it does not. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get to know. So then when you drive your truck from facility to facility, your vehicle, you have to do some special preparations. What do you have to do with your vehicle? Yeah, so um, I wash my vehicle all the time. So I'm that person who, when it's like negative 10 degrees, is pushing the button to try to go through the car wash. So um, that I, I should also mention that uh, I take my vehicle through the car wash. I also take a ton of showers. So I go to some barns um, where disease issues would be, a, I mean, a really big deal. That's our second sump pump of the day. Today, we have our co-sponsors, Iowa Strength. Get ripped one rep at a time. So sometimes I shower into the facilities, and so then they'll provide clothes for me on the other side of the shower. So you've been practicing for six years. How many showers do you think you've taken over your six years? I, I don't know. I don't know how many in the last six years. I can tell you my biggest week was 28 showers in one week. That's a lot of dry skin. Next sponsor, Jergens. Keep your skin moisturized. So a lot of showers, huh? It's a lot of showers. Okay. Yep. But the goal is we want to keep our food supply safe. So as you can see, farmers, producers, veterinarians, um, feed, uh, people delivering the feed, they are all essential in the animal food production process. And then from the farm, our pigs go on a packing plant and where they are processed and using some of the most sanitary conditions to make sure your food is safe. The last thing we want is you buying a product and getting sick from it. So Dr. Hayden, do you have any questions for me? I don't. You do not. Oh, no, I've got a great question. When's the next episode, and who's the next surprise guest? Well, we don't like to release things too ahead of time, but uh, you'll find out soon. I'll be dropping some hints on our next episode, episode four. But before you leave, I do have one last very important question is, where are the kids at? I thought you had them. All right, let's find out what our next episode is tomorrow. Signing off, Mr. Hayden and Dr. Kara Hayden. <laughs>